So as you mentioned, this revolution right now that is going, the ongoing revolution that is we have right now is really progressive. And it is sort of longer than the other ones as well so far. So uh, do you think, do, do we need the M struggle as one of the means against the regime? Or just the normal mass strikes will be enough? What do you think about it? Well, first of all, the revolution of 1979 was progressive in essence because people wanted freedom, they wanted equality, they were they, the workers were you know wanted rights for themselves and equality. So in essence, was progressive, but it was not conscious enough. And the left was populist mostly and were anti-imperialist. And this is the problem. Uh, we can touch on that, and that's anti-imperialist left in the whole world has a real big flaw of not seeing the regimes and the systems in as lo as long as they they have problems with the U.S. then they turn their blind eye to what's happening in those countries. And since uh, the left in Iran was also anti-American, but Khomeini came and apparently he, he was anti-American, yeah. then they were sort of disarmed. And it was only later they realized that was a regime change by America, actually. <laughs> but this time, to my opinion, the young generation is very much aware. The yeah. slogans telling us that. They have learned from history. They're not unaware of what's happened. They've seen what happened in 1979. They know it. They know that was a regime change. They don't want the monarchy. See, what happens now, the US and the West are trying to bring the monarchy back. Or the same kind of regime with crown, as we call it, or without the crown. It could be a republic, but the same regime, or with the monarchy. So what they have is the Shah's son, who is incredibly unpopular. He hasn't done nothing in his life, just spending the dollars that the dad took. This is how he's done all his life, had lots of money and lived a luxurious life and just yeah. clueless. And so people know that. People are not stupid. They know how much they stole from the country. And this has been happening in this regime too. All these people have taken so much money out of the country taken to Canada, Australia, Britain, Germany, Indonesia, Malaysia, you have what you have. They're all the children, they're living luxurious life in US and Canada and different people know that. And we the, the 70 percent of the population live under the poverty line in a country so rich because yeah. billions and billions are taken out of the country. And this happened in the previous regime as well. So this is, this is the story people know. So one of the slogans that actually has become very much um, resented and made the right wings angry is the slogan that says, no to the oppressor, be it the Shah, meaning monarchy, yeah. or the leader, meaning Khamenei, or the, this is. They're incredible. With the, they, 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 they're so creative with the slogans they make. They just rhyme so well. They just, you hear it and you remember it. And all over the country, people saying that, no to the oppressor, be it Shah or the leader. And there's another one, which is not as widespread, and I hope it becomes as, as widespread, is no to the Shah, no to the Mullah. You know what Mullah is, regime, meaning Islamic regime. Um, Councils must rule. And this is something very leftist. Yeah. It's not as widespread. I'm not trying to propagandize here, but it's been said, it's been written as a slogans on the walls, and it's getting more widespread. And the shouts for equality and freedom, that's important. It's not only freedom, because freedom can be interpreted. Freedom from the Islamic regime, and then you can bring another dictator. But once equality comes in, it's more difficult to manipulate yeah. because equality, they at the West, they're trying to only interpret it as equality between men and women, which is very important. 
very important and it's been one of the fights of Iran. I am a woman, women's liberation activist all my life. And I'm, you know, I, I chair this organization. But at the same time, I'm a Marxist. And I know what equality really means for even for men and women, you need an equal society. So when they say equality, they mean for, um, for everybody. So this shout of freedom and equality, men and women shouting, the West need the media only interprets it as gender equality. They just want to make it narrower. So because the equality among all the population, oh, 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 that's Marxist. That doesn't go with capitalism, you see? Yeah. But this is what people are asking for. The students, the workers, all these young people shouting. It's incredible, these shouts they, they, they talk about. And then you also, uh, they also have very creative ways of protesting the symbols they use. From the day two, three, they start, first of all, women had thrown their veils away, which is incredible. No to Islamic way, that, that's important, is an important symbol. Because I've said it for the past 20 years, even more, that the veil is the flag of the Islamic regime and Islamic movement. So once you say no to that, you say no to that flag, no to that movement, no to that system or the regime in Iran. And after a while, they started burning the veil. That was very important on the street, in the demonstration, city after city, university after university, they burned the veil. And what was beautiful was men and women did it together. Young men and young women, hand in hand, in Islamic society, hand in hand, shouting for equality and freedom, burning the veil. That was incredibly important. And after that, something that's become a big joke and people laugh is what is, they call it turban throwing. You know yeah. what turban is? Yeah? yeah. They call it turban throwing. It's become like a game. It's like, you know, a fun game. There are clips of videos coming one after the other in different cities, young women and young men walk behind the mullah, go there and throw his turban and laugh at him and ro run away. And now the mullahs are actually scared. They are scared. They should be. They should be because they are part and parcel of a brutal regime that killed more than a million of the population. It's just plundered the country and 70% of people on the poverty line and just plundered the whole country and killed. This is how they reigned in that country. So these are different symbols. Well, what I like to finish this answer with is, as I said, the slogans are progressive. They have a look to the future. It's not only no to the Islamic regime, which they say it constantly, death to the Islamic regime, death to Khamenei, death to this, death to that. That's incredible. They're throwing all the Islamic symbols away or burn it. That's incredible but they also have a future-looking perspective as well when they say no to the oppressor, be it the Shah or the leader. This is saying no to regime change. So that has made the work of the US, CIA, MI6, Britain, NATO, very difficult. How am I going to organize a regime change when people openly are coming to say no to everybody I put forward? Yeah. See? So this is where I hope people can organize their councils and take over. So people's councils could take over the regime after the Islamic regime is toppled, which I think its days are numbered.